today to lockdown, which means you don't just come in sunbathe. Can you please just leave? Italy is now on lockdown over the coronavirus. Italy's Prime Minister making the announcement at a news conference just minutes ago. He said the measure was taken in order to protect the population, especially the most vulnerable. The major development this hour is more looming travel restrictions. Citizens of the UK and Ireland are just a day away from the latest US measures. The Trump administration has already suspended travel for 30 days from 26 Schengen countries in Europe. Britain was added to that list after its death toll from the pandemic jumped to 21. Our challenge right now is to do two things, is to prevent the new influx of cases, hence the travel restrictions. And for what we're dealing with right now is to know that we're going to get more infections, but blunt it so that we don't have that. That Easter in the Vatican, while it's still a month away, is going to be essentially canceled for the public. Seit der Deutschen Einheit, nein, seit dem Zweiten Weltkrieg, gab es keine Herausforderung an unser Land mehr, bei der es so sehr auf unser gemeinsames, solidarisches Handeln ankommt. Mes chers compatriotes, Nous sommes en train de vivre des jours difficiles. Nous ressentons tous en ce moment la peur, l'angoisse pour nos parents, pour nous-mêmes, face à ce virus redoutable, invisible, imprévisible. Stiamo affrontando un'emergenza, un'emergenza nazionale. L'abbiamo fatto sin dall'inizio con misure di massima cautela e stiamo affrontando con consapevolezza, senza sottovalutarla. Uh, it's absolutely critical in managing the, the spread of this virus, that we take the right decisions at the right time based on the latest and best evidence. Oricât de greu ar fi să ne adaptăm acestor limitări, aceasta este singura cale prin care salvăm viețile celor dragi nou, viețile celor de lângă noi. I don't know that I've had a big decision. But I'm going to surround myself with the greatest minds and we're going to make a decision and hopefully it's going to be the right decision. I will say this, uh, I want to get it open as soon as we can. We have to get our country open, Jeff. It's, it's, uh, there's always a risk. This is, a, this is genius that we're fighting. You know, we're fighting this hidden enemy, which is genius, okay? Quite spooky. I've shot footage probably dozens of times in time.
Times Square. And it's almost a ghost town today. <laughs> Picture yourself. This is not a dream. It's the first proper week of spring. And after the long Nordic winter, people are out in the park, mixing, mingling. Normal life, as we know it, has stopped. But not everywhere. Remember this? Going out, eating, socializing. Well, in Sweden, they're still doing it. Unlike all its European neighbors, Swedish policy is locked down light. Citizens can still mostly go about their life. The government, entrusting its people to just use common sense. Social distancing it's more relaxed in Sweden. Much of Europe has gone into lockdown. But in the spring sunshine, Stockholm cafes have customers, the schools are open, and the Prime Minister has urged people not to panic. In my opinion, Sweden is handling the crisis very good. Uh, and it's partly because I don't think I could manage being inside the whole day. The number of coronavirus-related deaths per million people is far lower in Sweden than here in the locked-down UK. It's even lower than Italy, Spain and France, which have been locked down even longer. It's worth noting Sweden is much earlier in its curve versus other European countries. The death figure could still explode in the coming weeks. Um, you know, recently you heard Trump say that it's a disaster over here, the coronavirus. The herd, they call it the herd. Uh, Sweden's suffering very, very badly. And my friends and family back home are texting me and saying like, oh my God, what's it like in Sweden? We hear it's just death and destruction everywhere. So it's funny how the media can really get to people. Danish political scientist, Dr. Bjorn Lomborg is a globally recognized economist and a big thinker, who's turned his expertise to the coronavirus conundrum. We should do a lot for corona, but we shouldn't do everything. Just like we should have speed limits, but we shouldn't have speed limits down to five kilometers an hour. Trump uh, yesterday criticized a small country in Europe called Sweden. He said they made a mistake. There are horrible deaths there. I have no idea what Trump is talking about. And as usual, I doubt very much that Trump knows what Trump is talking about. Let's take as a comparison to your, the neighboring countries in Scandinavia, because yep. a lot of people are sending around these charts that show that Denmark and Norway and Finland have had much fewer deaths on a per capita basis and Sweden, the, the rate is still climbing, and they take that as proof. I think that the difference between countries would be quite small in the end. It's about saving the restaurants, it's about saving the pubs, it's about saving uh, people's work. Maybe we have found a good balance, but let's see when it's over. If we don't have a society that works, then the healthcare system cannot work. So you have to strike the right balance here. And if it doesn't work, we're ready to make new decisions. Whether or not the Swedish experiment continues to work remains to be seen. But political scientist Bjorn Lomborg sees it as an example of the terrible trade-off we all need to make. That is actually what the Swedish authorities are doing right now. They are accepting to have more deaths right now because it'll also mean fewer deaths in the future. And at the same time, of course, it'll mean less economic damage. If the lockdown is a treatment that's being trialed globally, then Sweden is the control group. This is not about going out and getting your hair done or meeting your mates down the park. This is about whether the course the rest of the world is on, it's sustainable or even beneficial in the long term. 
I don't think we'll have more deaths. Come back one year from now and I think we'll have the same proportion of deaths. This virus is here and it's going to stay and it's all around the world. Um, so we're going to have to come to terms with what we can do to minimise the risk, but without trying to go for zero risk, because that's an impossibility. <laughs>
an increase in use of substances, like often alcohol increase. And those kind of things aren't necessarily detectable, but you start to put them together. They're the early signs, and people can often not necessarily notice. There, there is a general sense that everybody's suffering. There is a general sense that this is a shared community experience. A new study is warning that the next health crisis triggered by COVID-19 may actually be a wave of suicides. Uh, the study warns that the isolation and the anxiety from the lockdown may be responsible for as many as 75,000 drug overdoses and suicides over the next decade. There's already hundreds of people, if not thousands, as we don't have an actual count, of patriots all around of different political affiliations yelling for what they love the most. This country, but not the country that they're seeing at the moment, but a country that stands for freedom and against tyranny. Why would governments in the United States, bound by the Constitution, want to move uh, against our liberties? That, that's just something I'm actually genuinely confused about. Oh, it's scary. Yeah, um, I'm more scared about that than the virus, for sure. I made out with a bunch of people. I was not hygienic. I acted like a degenerate. My immune system was down from all the drinking and drugs. And for I should have coronavirus, but I don't. And no one down there does. <laughs> There's not a lot of cases in Miami. You know what's ridiculously irresponsible and selfish is that your generation only cares about this virus because it affects you. No one cares when it affects younger people. They just say it's our fault. You guys are the ones dying of it, not us. So you're blaming all of us and you're saying that you're blowing this pandemic to crazy proportions and instilling fear in the nation. Now that all of us have been stuck in the house with nothing to do except throw our cat's birthday parties over Zoom. <laughs> Everyone, everyone at home has had time to come up with some theories about how exactly they think this whole thing went down. yourself this question what is 5g it's a super fast network that runs through the air you know what else goes through the air coronavirus what else goes through the air superman and what burger did i eat while watching the last superman movie five guys five guys 5g i rest my cake what country is this well it's a country in a lockdown we're told we have no choice but to do this to stop our lives completely Mass quarantines, they tell us again and again, are the only way to save lives. But that's a lie. They don't know it's true, despite what they claim. There is no scientific record to consult. It's never been done. Every one of those lives is a tragic loss. But when you count 150 versus 2.3 million, you have to say, we have to open up. We have to go back. Our bus drivers, our but hasn't cleaners, it been because of social distancing that the numbers have been what they are? How do you know until we have a control group? We offer to be a control group. Now, COVID is not the flu. We're not saying that. It's a lot more contagious and it's new. It hits the old hardest, young, relatively uh, unscathed by it, relatively. And according to researchers, there are as many as 33 mutations uh, to COVID, COVID-19. Yet the COVID mortality rate, we now know because now we have the data, is a fraction of what a lot of the professionals, the experts, told us it would be. The surprising part, what we found was that um, there were 15 people, 15% uh, in that population that didn't know that they had an infection. And um, overall, that they're calculating a case fatality rate. So how many people 
are actually dying of that disease in, in that population is 0.37%. So this case fatality rate um, is not actually different probably in other countries. Quite rightly, is this spreads by droplets and by hand contact. Now, if you're outside in the sunshine, and sunshine itself is a sterilizing agent, I would think if you keep your two meter rule, you'll be safer there than inside where the virus will persist for longer. Providing you're maintaining your social distance and minimising the people you're having close contact with, I can't see how that is going to transmit much infection. We're currently living through the largest and most expensive experiment ever conducted in human history. We have spent trillions of dollars and crushed millions of people purely on the guess that a nationwide lockdown would save us from the coronavirus. Several hundred protesters gathered at the Capitol yesterday, calling on the governor to reopen Arizona for business. But of course, this is a hot button issue, and there are people that don't feel that way. A group of health workers was also there, silently standing in a counter protest. Although they have differing opinions and, and false information about this virus, I, I do hope that they know that if they were to show up in our hospital tomorrow that we would take care of them with open arms and, and be there to care for them in a second if they needed us. I hope they know that. People die. It's a fact of life. It's a welcome fact of life. People should die. People should make place for future generations. Hand the torch, so to speak. People have a productive life. They leave behind a legacy. And then they have to say goodbye. They have to depart this world. And there are various agents that faci facilitate our departure. COVID-19 is just the latest in an extremely long chain. The chain of being, the chain of dying. Death used to be an integral part of our daily life in the past. But now we have banished death. We don't want to die. We want to remain immortal. Like in the Australian wildfires. Oh, yeah. Because, I mean, those are pretty, like, I think those are going to be the defining feature of 2020. Yeah, you'd think. Oh, no? Not even a little bit. Really? But because they're, they're a pretty big deal. Yeah, your definition of a pretty big deal is going to change for sure. Wow. Okay, so what is the bad news then? I remember very clearly a nurse speaking very loudly, wanting me to kind of understand, Josh, you came to the emergency room, you are in the ICU, you tested positive for COVID, you have a breathing tube in, you need to relax and breathe or you are going to die. Where are the masks going? Are they going out the back door? I. I've been wearing this surgical mask for two days. I'm on the third day of using my N95. They've been delivering for years, 10 to 20,000 masks, okay. How do we go from 10,000 masks? To 300,000. I'll tell you how as a healthcare worker, because we have a pandemic. There's a reason why these governors are saying what they're saying and why they put in place, yes, strong, and some would even say draconian measures, but it is to protect families and communities and to save lives. They're not acting out of some governmental malice or some desire to, uh, you know, have people lose their jobs. That's the last thing they want. I was like having these hallucinations where I would like be passing out and really slowly be falling at a super slow rate. I remember having thoughts like, oh, I'm dying, and this is gonna hurt when I hit my face on the ground. But people are going to be very understandably nervous about going to these places. 
Has that doorknob been sterilized? Is the person who's about to give me a haircut, uh, have they been tested? Has this building been uh, disinfected in some way? What about the ventilation? Uh, if I sit at a restaurant, I'm, I'm there for over an hour. That's prolonged contact with people. It, it, you know, I'm not trying to alarm people, but how do you justify potentially putting people at risk without uh, truly re getting the rewards from, from reopening businesses? I, I don't think you do. I thought one of the nurses had um, taken a circular saw and just buzzed my arm off and then just buzzed off both of my legs. Another circular saw came through the wall and just cut my head in half. I was positive they were trying to kill me. People are trying to figure out whether or not Sweden's approach to this sort of low scale uh, reaction going with the what, what are the, the herd immunity situation is, is better than closing off the economy. Have you seen enough data out of Sweden to suggest whether or not that approach is better? Well, you know, it, it almost is irrelevant because Sweden is a very different kind of society than we have. Mm -hmm. And what works in one society doesn't necessarily work in another society. They have a very homogeneous society. We have a very diverse type of society. And they have relatively stable living conditions. Uh, we don't. You know, there's a lot of things that just don't fit. So I don't know that we can use their model. Their point is the cure can't be worse than the illness itself. Yep. What is your response to them? The illness is death. What is worse than death? What if somebody commits suicide because they can't pay their bills? Yeah, but the illnesses may be my death as opposed to your death. Well, the protesters say this, governor says this, protesters say this, governor says this. Okay, think about it as your family might be in the mix. Because when I see 484 New Yorkers die, I feel that it's like people in my family. I need a ventilator. I need a ventilator. Adam, there's a ventilator. So what we're gonna do is intubate her right now to support her oxygen level so that we can improve the oxygen exchange. This procedure spews virus into the air, leaving staff at enormous risk as they try to save the patient's life. But these measures are largely what done it. We don't have a therapeutic. We don't have a vaccine. So why did the numbers drop like this from, you know, in the millions to in the tens of thousands? It's because of these measures. And now as we think about reopening, we're going to have to say, how much did this play a part in reducing that? How much did closing schools play a part of that? How much did closing large venues play a part in that? How much did you know closing these businesses play a part in that? Up around the country, um, there hasn't been a single report of a single hospital being overwhelmed, to my knowledge. Um, you know, it looked... I mean, at the peak a few weeks ago, there were various single hospitals in across London and some other areas which could basically take no one else. Um, I mean, but as a nation, as we always predicted, we said, you know, we acted in time to prevent the health system being overwhelmed. Fauci, fire, Fauci. Seriously? So instead of fighting the virus, they want to get rid of the one guy who's warning us about the virus? The British are coming! The British are coming! Ugh, I hate the British. Someone shut that guy up. And let's be honest, people, this is both insane and counterproductive. Because the more you gather in groups, the longer the lockdown will have to go on. Stretchers, row after row. Comatose patients in isolation rooms. Every surface is dangerous, and so is the air, especially during an intubation. Every day you're thinking, am I going to get really sick? Am I going to be able to recover? Am I going to be one of those young people that, for whatever reason, dies from this? Is there yeah, you want to go, by the way, right you want to go to work? Go take the job as an essential worker. Do it tomorrow. Right, you're working. I am. You're an essential worker. So go take a job as an but, essential but, worker. But the people aren't hiring because of the No, there are people hiring. hiring. You can get a job as an essential worker. So now you can go to work and you can be an essential worker and you're not going to kill anyone. 